Zoom, yeah. And then we're recording. Um, what do you think about the concert today, uh, Paul Diano? Very strange for me, because I'm losing my voice. Um, I started getting a cold yesterday, and I'm very tired. But yeah, it was kind of cool. But um, I've got to say one thing about Norway. I've had the worst monitors on the whole fucking tour ever. Only one night was good. Um, you know, it's been killing my voice anyway, because I've just been constantly touring. But apart from that, it was awesome. Yeah, it was good fun. And Trondheim's always good to play. So, it's cool. You uh, was here in uh, 2005. Do you think this kid was better? Oh, fuck me. Yeah, my band are ten times better. Yeah, these guys are awesome. Um, yeah, we've, had, we've all had a few problems on the road, but yeah, overall the band are great. Uh, it's a Norwegian uh, band here. Yeah, there's one of them right there. There's, there's, there's our Henry. Um, these guys are fantastic. But the last band we played was uh, Thunderbolt, too. His name was also Norwegian. You know, uh, I think I have a city. Yeah, they're, they're from Banjo Country, somewhere. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, banjo somewhere, banjo somewhere in the middle. Uh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, some of the guys were there last night at the concert, too. Um, yeah, but they, nah, these guys are great. We all seem to click really well as well. It's been easy, good fun. Because I've played with so many different bands around the world, you know, just yes. tour. You have a band in every country. I've got 28 bands, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, we just rehearse them up and just go. Because it makes it easier to play for the kids. Otherwise, I'll do one world tour. Mm -hmm. And you won't see me anymore for four years, like most other bands do. And I can't do that. I'm bored. I can't play. How many concerts are you playing in, uh, in a year? We, well, about 250, 300. As soon as we finish here today, tonight, I've got to get back to the hotel. I get my luggage, I've got to be at the airport at about quarter of six in the morning. I fly directly to London Stansted. I meet my manager, I go through some paperwork with a fucker and stuff like that. And then I've got to get over from that airport to Gatwick Airport, check in at three o'clock because I'm flying to Buenos Aires. I arrive in Buenos Aires at five o'clock Monday morning, <sighs> straight to the hotel, get my laundry done, have a sleep. And my best friend's flying my two daughters in from Brazil they're coming in to be with me they're only seven and five so they're coming on the road with daddy for a week or two just to have a rest and well for me just to chill out and have my kids there I got and it's warmer yeah, yeah it's going to be better for me but 12 dates um, in Brazil I mean in, Brazil, in uh, Chile Paraguay Uruguay uh, Peru yeah, and then from there back to Sao Paulo which is my home city but that's my second only show I've done in two years there so it's going to be awesome that one drop my daughters back home to their mother and then uh i come to switzerland and after that i think i got germany germany a couple of shows in germany and then i may go back to the studio and get some recording done as well we got we've done five songs for the new album already but we haven't written the rest of it yet so <laughs> we're getting on with that and then do that then i got 10 days off in may before the finland tour but I'm moving from my UK base. I'm going to Crete in Greece, yeah? So I'm moving there. So I've got to do that in that time. Then got to do the finished yeah. fucking tour. Cheer, buddy. And then after that, um, i got to be back on duty in Brazil September, October with me and the guys from Sepultura. When we're doing the Brazil All-Stars. But it's like we're doing all covers as a music education thing. Get on with my new solo album. I hope that's done. Play some more festivals and some more touring. Then around about October, November, going on tour as the singer for Sepultura. And then hopefully we get on with a new album as well. So there you go. It seems like you have it all in order. Uh, yeah, but will I be alive? That's the problem. That's another question. <laughs> I still got, I got my leg operated on. Yeah, I got busted knee. I've been carrying a broken knee. Leg in Finland, I heard. Yeah, four months ago. And I can't get it fixed yet. It's killing me. Um, are you tired of Iron Maiden questions? Yep. <laughs> Go on. Yes. Um, if you look back to the Iron Maiden years, what's your favorite album uh, between the self-titled and the Killers? Oh, I think Iron Maiden was definitely the best album, but the sounds are shit, you know, but the songs were better, more punk, we were still hungry. I mean, I know Iron Maiden had done a couple of demos and stuff, and they had three different singles before me and stuff, but um, yeah, it kind of worked out well when we, me and Steve got together, because, you know, it was two different things all together, like, you know, it was Iron Maiden was a slightly different heavy metal band to what most heavy metal bands were because I did like the way they played a little bit faster it was a little bit more complicated yeah uh, but I came from hardcore punk and that was that, that's what did it it just so, uh, made history with that shit man that's cool yes. 
it's a little punky edge on the, our, the first two Iron yeah, our Maidens. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that, and then when we started getting a bit too heavy metal, that's when I quit. Not having that shit. I, I can't. I'm not, I'm not a heavy metal singer. I never have been. Um, I can do it quite well, but I'm just not interested in it. You know. So you're more a punk man, and it's always been punk hardcore for me. Um, Your favorites are Ramones, I heard. Yeah, absolutely. Ramones my favorite band. Well, apart from UK Subs as well. UK Subs, The Damned, uh, Anti Nowhere League. Uh, I like Black Flag as well and stuff like that. I, I love all punk stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I like a lot of hardcore stuff too. And Subtle Tour, System of Down, shit like that. It's all good. Yes. Um, it's not heavy metal. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Thunderstick. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the highlights in your career without mention Iron Maiden oh fucking there's been many uh, the last time we did we, we haven't done the album for six years but last time we did 25 million in, in South America that was quite surprising really um, it was awesome um, that was really good because um, we give most of the money away to uh, like South American charities and stuff so that's all good um, I tell you the best thing about this is going out every day it's a different highlight every day, different country, meeting different people, or the same country, different city, meeting different people. That's all good. Um, and the opportunities that I've got for working for these South American charities and stuff like that. I'm working with Hugo Chavez, I'm working for Fidel Castro, uh, doing stuff like that for Latin kids. Um, I know it sounds a bit racist, but uh, if we don't have many people, Latin stars who do anything like that you know like people like fucking Ricky Martin lives in America Jennifer Lopez you know you know she's I don't see her giving anything to fucking Mexican kids Puerto Rican kids um, they are proud to be a uh, South American yeah, but they're they, proud to be Latino but they don't seem to be doing too much about it you know what I'm saying I'll, I'll text me it's only me and guys like Sepultura and stuff and um, the Brazilian punk band Hazard de Parao Age Mundos we're, we're all uh, not just for Brazil we're doing everything for South Central Latin America you know um Try, I'm trying to get people aware of UNICEF in South Central Latin America as well because you know I'm, I'm trying to be an ambassador and stuff for that shit. That's what, that's education, what's... education, food programs, welfare programs, it's, it's important. I mean, I've got six kids and all my little babies are fucking, well, my little babies, my oldest son's 23, but all my kids are taken care of, all my family, they've got everything they need and I want every South American kid to have that. Yeah. Eight million children in Brazil will not have any education and that's wrong, that is really wrong. Uh, after Maiden, you have been in a couple of bands like the Anno, Platinum, and Curious, and a yeah. project called Gugma Gug. No, nah, right, well, let me tell you this. Let me just set this, let's set this straight now. The Anno was a solo album which I wanted to do because it sounded so different from my Iron Maiden because everyone's expecting something to be like that, and I would never do that, go like back to the Iron Maiden kind of shit, yeah? So anyway, we did that. I wrote them all the songs on that album when I just got married. I'm sitting on my ass in the Caribbean. It sounded gay and crap, basically. But we got a number one album out of that in Japan. Uh, the Battle Zone um, is the band we got together. It's not a project. It was a real band. Uh, but Battle Zone and Killers are the same thing. We, we, we changed our name from record company problems, yeah? So Battle Zone became Killers. It's the same kind of thing. And Killers was not my choice either. That wasn't being my band name. It's just a... We couldn't think of a better name, so that was it. But the Gog Magog fucking project was stupid <laughs> as fuck. Like really bad because these dudes, um, they wouldn't let us write anything. They wrote all the music and they were trying to do this super group. I replaced David Coverdale. For Whitesnake? Yeah, I replaced David Coverdale. Yannick. I can't remember who he fucking replaced. Um, Neil Murray replaced, replaced John Entwistle from The Who. Um, Clive replaced uh, Cozy Pal, you know, because they had all these other old fuckers up there first of all, and then uh, they didn't like it, so they, they got us to take it all over, and I replaced David Coverdale, that's easy to do. So, uh, but all the songs are written by this guy who got arrested and went to jail for about 10 years for being a paedophile, Jonathan King, and Rod Argent from the band Argent, and uh, Russ Ballard as well, who's like a songwriter, but they wrote all the material, and. We couldn't write anything. We thought the material was awful. So there's only one single uh, yeah, of Gugma. We all fucking quit. We're not doing that shit because if you can't write, and the guy was asking something stupid like about, yeah, he's asking he's asking something like about ten million dollars to sign the band as a super group, and I'm like, I wouldn't give you fucking twenty five dollars for it. You know, we just had fun. <laughs> um, 
about the, the year 2000 you released the Nomad album. Uh, that was the biggest one so <laughs> far. That's been cool as shit. But why did you choose to re-release this album with the name The Living Dead? On because the it wasn't released later. in many countries in Europe. That's oh. the reason why. So we re-released it. Um, when we did the... Um, when I'd done the thing for Dave Mustaine, which he wanted me to do when I, when I did... Um, what the fuck was the song? Uh, Civil Destruction. Uh, we did it for uh, inclusion on a Megadeth tribute for them, and Dave loved it. And I'm like... I might use it myself on the album. And he thought, oh, that'd be cool. So I, I did it. So we did it as an extra bonus tracks. And then we released it in Europe. Because um, it only went to a couple of small countries, you know, in Europe. And we wanted to really, we, we didn't think it was going to get the success that we had in South America of like 25 million. We knew it would, wouldn't happen. But it was still cool. So it got the record out. But this time around, as I said, we're making a new record right now. We've uh, just been in Germany two weeks ago. I've done five tracks in two days. Um, and it's fucking cool as hell. Um, I got five demos with me of it. Um, it's all been written by me and my producer this time, not by any band members. Okay. And it's all total industrial. It's fucking cool as shit. I'm loving every minute of it. It's good. There's a new version of Running Free as well, and it's the last one. But you wouldn't even know the song. You wouldn't recognize it at all. Uh, it, it's just Your so. Of, uh, yeah, it, well, it's my song anyway. Yeah, but, it, but it's so fucking heavy. It's unbelievable. Um, I've just had the greatest time ever to write this stuff and we wrote a couple of really good songs, I, I, what I've got so far. Um, there's one song called Black Boots, which is I'm really proud of because it's all about the, the war in Iraq. You know, it's about black boots on the sand and pushing the weak and poor around sort of thing about oil, stealing oil from the Arabs and shit. Yeah, it's just like, not good. And how we're fighting back. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Uh, how do you compare the South America concerts uh, and the <laughs> European concerts? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Cancer is a wonderful thing. Um, <coughs> um, oh, come on, South America. If you go to anybody in Brazil and you say, hey, like, you know, like Puliano, like, uh, you know, I'm from Latin parents anyway, but I was born in London this year. You say, oh, you know, like Puliano, I have made in London. They say, no, 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 he's Brazilian. Brazilian, that's it. But it's not only there, it's all of South America. Different languages, we speak Portuguese, they speak Spanish, but um, I belong to these people over there and they belong to me. Uh, I'm Brazilian Irish. I'm from Brazilian Italian parents, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Huh? But um, yeah, it's awesome, man. I'm, I'm loving it because uh, they're, they're fucking awesome. Um, they love me so much and my love for them is awesome. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there with them, hanging out with them. I spend a lot of time with the kids out there. You know, more than I would do with the ones over here because no one have to get to the concert and that's it. I always give myself about two or three hours to meet the kids and hang out with them. I'll probably go for a beer with them or go and have dinner or go football and shit. Oh, it's fucking awesome. They're brilliant people. They, they really are. Um, without sounding racism, without sounding stupid, um, you really have to go to South America to experience it. Not just Brazil, um, but places like Chile, um, Argentina, um, Honduras, Salvador, uh, you know, Guatemala, they're fucking awesome places, man. They're really good. I'm so at home anywhere there, it doesn't matter. So going back to Argentina Monday is going to be just like going home. Even though it's not Brazil, but it's, it is home. Yeah. It's Latino people. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, it. We're the same blood. We're the same people. We have the same genetics. It's fucking awesome. And the food's fantastic. <laughs> Everything is fantastic about South America. Pretty much. Yeah, especially the chicas. That's why he's living there. Yeah, especially the chicas. Oh, just went back to my roots, man. <laughs> um, you have been on a lot of uh, tribute cities. What's your personal... Song you have done I hate doing that shit. I do that for help my manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, 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 Lee was doing all this shit, and uh, yeah, I don't mind. Okay, it's, it's fun for me because it gives me a chance to try something different. That's why I do it. Um, I think the, the sort of slightly hardcore version I did of Sleeping Bags, Easy Top, was quite funny. <laughs> I, I tell you, one of the best ones I liked, um, uh, Nazareth, when I did the. Uh, uh, a dog, a son of a bitch, you know, like that was a cool song actually. I did that and I did um, Broken Down Angel off of that, and it's quite hard to fucking sing actually, but it was a challenge, but it was, it was quite funny. Um, but I, I, th I think the best one we did was um, Black Metal when we did the tribute to Venom, because we, <laughs> we, 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 we was actually <laughs> well, we was, at, we was actually in the studio finishing Menaces to Society in uh. the studio in Newcastle. 
and we was at um, Abaddon Studio, and they was doing the tribute there, and they asked us to go and do it, and I just finished the whole session of the fucking Menace of Society album, had a cup of tea, and then went and done black metal, and we made it sound like a Judas Priest song, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite, it's quite good actually. Oh. Yeah, but I sang it like Rob Halford, right? Really high. It's quite, quite funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an awesome track actually. Uh, me and the guys from Candlemas was there and that we did all that. And Masai was in there. And that. Me and Masai was together and that doing because well, we we got friends, us guys. Um, the last question. Uh, anything you? <laughs> it's not a question, but uh, anything you want want to see to our uh, uh, want to say to our readers and listeners? Yes, uh, this country's fantastic. I love coming to Norway. I do have a Norwegian girlfriend, by the way. I want to let you know that. Um, no, it's it's, 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 it's it's no, it's always good to come. This is a very very beautiful country. The people are fucking great. I always have the greatest time here. Um, if if it wasn't so damn expensive in this country, I would live here in a heartbeat. But then again, you don't need me. You got all the Polish people, so that's all. Right. Oh, we need more like you. No, you got more Polish people. No, no, not as many as we have, though. But not as many as in England. But no, this is a beautiful country. Fucking, it's fantastic. I, I love coming here. I always had the greatest time. Um, got a lot of friends here. I have a lot of friends. I had nearly 250 friends turn up the other night in uh, Algarve, which is fucking unreal. That's my old lady's hometown. So I went there. But we had friends from Stavanger come, from Sandnes. Every it's fucking awesome, man. Had the greatest time. It was brilliant. Um, I just love coming here. It's great. All you got to do is change the weather. Just turn the heat up. <laughs> turn the heat, turn the heat up a little bit. Yeah, 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 but even summertime. So, yeah, yeah, um, it's better in the summer. So I'm going home. To, well, I'm going, I'm, it's 37 in Buenos Aires. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you'll be sick again because it's so. Nah, no, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll dry up. I'll dry up like that, man. Yeah, no problem. Jealous. We have to wait like a few months before we even get like. I've been here in summertime. though, it's awesome. though. I love yeah. it. Yeah, Scandinavia is fucking beautiful. The only problem is too many mosquitoes. Yeah, that's the other problem. Too many yeah. Hotels. yeah. yeah. <laughs> come to Brazil, come to Brazil, man. You'll be in traction. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> um. Can you make a jingle uh, like some? Uh, I am Paul Diano, and you're listening to Hammer Who? Hammer Teeth. Hammer Teeth. Hammer what? Hammer Teeth. Hammer Teeth. Hammer Teeth. Hammer Teeth. Hammer Teeth. It means yeah. hammer time. Oh, oh, hammer! I'll do it. I'll do it in English then. <laughs> it's better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I should do this. Hey, it's MC Hammer. You're listening to Hammer Time. No, 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 no. Break it down. I'm sorry. Can't touch this. Hey, this is Bodiano, and you are listening to Hammer Time, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs>